Hey guys, Great Big Boar. This is in the box number four for May 15th, 2011. Um, Pat Kendell has made a few videos about Christianity lately, um, and I know that he kind of turned off a lot of people with all of his Islam stuff, and I don't know what else. Um, people really seem to be offended by him, but um, I recommend that you give his Christianity videos a listen. They're, they're pretty good stuff, and I find myself agreeing with him. Um, my point in bringing him up is um, a statement that he makes in one of these videos. Um, he likes Jesus. He says he can listen to Jesus all day long. Um, he also says that he thinks Jesus would despise Christianity. Um, in other words, you know, maybe Jesus did have a few good ideas, uh, and the problem with Jesus now is just all the crap that has been added onto him and attributed to him over the years. So it was with Pat's recent Christianity videos in mind that uh, I had kind of an interesting experience a few nights ago. I was watching an excellent series of videos by YouTuber Evidence, and I'll put a link to his channel in the love bar. Um, he's talking about his own deconversion in this series. Um, and in one of the videos, he talks about a book by this Catholic bishop named John Spong. Um, Spong is an atheist, a Catholic bishop who is an atheist, but he considers himself a Christian. Um, and the way he explains that is that, uh, more or less, he likes what Jesus had to say. He just doesn't buy all the supernatural crap. Um, and so presumably he'd also throw out all the cultural baggage that Jesus brought with him. Um, now, listening to Spong's ideas, I found myself for the first time in my life actually thinking of Jesus as just a regular guy uh, with no attachment to any kind of supernatural. He... he maybe just kind of looked around and saw that the powerful were mistreating those who aren't powerful and thought he should say something about it. I find myself thinking of him as a reformer, maybe someone who didn't even believe in Yahweh. Maybe a guy who, like most decent people, I would hope, uh, would think that traditional Judaism was really extremely empty and left a whole lot to be desired. Um, you know, so maybe he was you know, a brave reformer, brave enough to buck the system. I, I've never been impressed with Jesus, but I've always kind of held him to uh, maybe an unfair standard. Uh, I think I'll I'll have to go back and study Jesus a little bit with these things in mind. Um, even if all of his ideas uh, are now outdated, uh, we could still give him some credit for having introduced some ideas that in his day were pretty radical. So I could imagine Jesus as being a little bit like Socrates, although obviously not nearly as smart. Um, but at the same time, I mean, growing up in that demoralizing culture of Yahwism, I, I could possibly give someone a break for being less articulate than the Greek philosophers. YouTuber Bossman103 posted some interesting questions a couple of weeks ago called Five Questions for Atheists and Theists. Um, and I think they're pretty good questions. Um, the first one is, what do you think the biggest problem with your side is? I think the biggest problem with atheists is that we have a really bad definition of the word tolerance. Um, we want so badly to live and let live that we end up tolerating things that we shouldn't. Uh, and just one example among millions of them um, is superstitionists teaching children that they might go to hell or that other human beings definitely will go to hell. Um, this is obscene, and it's child abuse, and there should be laws against it. And there would be, I think, if we got rid of this notion that religion and or tradition are, are some kind of carte blanche for people to poison their children's minds. Question number two, if you could deconvert five people, who would they be and why? The person I would love to deconvert the most would be myself. I would love to be absolutely free of all fear of hell. That would be a wonderful experience, I think. Um, uh, now, as for deconverting other people, it's, it's a little bit tricky. I think the primary result of deconverting some prominent superstitionist would be a kind of crass reaction as though we had scored points in some way, um, like all of this is a game. Um, I think we already engage in way too much of this kind of taste great, less filling 
uh, kind of argument, you know, with people just kind of like deciding their loyalties. Uh, I think it, it really confuses things. Um, and and deconverting some prominent superstitionist would just it would just provide another distraction from the real issues, another thing for people to argue about, another opportunity for people to call each other fanboys and that kind of thing. Um, I would much rather um, deconvert people who are not so well known, but especially people who have a little bit of charisma and can influence other people but enough integrity to stick to honest and open discussion and not manipulate people. Question number three, would you ever date anyone from the other side? Um, why or why not? It would depend on how far on the other side she is. Um, I could have no problem with a, a deist, um, and I can even handle someone who likes Jesus, especially after hearing Pat Condell's thoughts on the matter, as long as it's one of the less virulent incarnations of Jesus. Um, I would never, ever date or even be friends with someone who intends to worship Yahweh after it throws me into hell. That's disgusting. Um, I wouldn't want to hang out with someone who makes unjustified claims, and especially someone who criticizes me for not accepting unjustified claims. Um, and I, I wouldn't want to hang out with someone who can't see how ridiculous most religions are. Let's see. Question number four, if you found out that there is a God or if there is not a God, how would it affect you? So I'd break it down into two questions. If I found out that there is a God, how would that change my perspective on life? Um, and now, assuming that you mean an omnipotent creator that has planted fake fossils all over the world, has falsified the ages of rocks all over the world, and even out in space... Uh, and manipulated all the DNA of every living thing to make it appear that evolution is real, just so it can fault us for not believing and then throw us into hell for all eternity. If I found out that God was real, I would just fall into despair, uh, and uh, you know, and I've uh, into a despair that I've been in before. At, you know, when I was a kid, worrying about these things. Um, if I were to start believing again that it's true, yeah, uh, just despair would be my only response. Now. Uh, the other side of the question, if I found out that there is no God, um, I, I don't think I can imagine what that would be like, because um, the God described in the Bible is very clearly a God that has no problem whatsoever altering people's perceptions of reality, and, you know, as the New Testament says, sending powerful delusions. So even if I were somehow shown very clearly that there is no God, I could still allow for the fact that there's this nasty monster out there that is fucking with me and altering my brain and altering my perceptions of reality with the intention of throwing me into hell. Unfortunately, that is the God that's described in the Bible. And, um, you know, when you get a good dose of that when you're a kid, it's, um, I don't know, so far impossible to get rid of. Finally, let's see, question number five, what's the most positive thing about the other side? Um, I would like to say that at least they don't worship something awful, but that's not true. They do worship something awful. Um, the one thing I can say for them is that most of them probably are decent people who don't realize how awful Yahweh is. Um, many of them make a habit of telling ridiculous lies in order to dupe their fellow superstitionists out of their hard-earned money, but I think that charlatans like that are an exception. Um, I think that the reason most superstitionists are superstitious is uh, has only a little to do with their character and um, a lot to do with their upbringing. So that's in the box number four, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that at least some of you will have something to say. Thanks for watching.